Oh, nggak saya. Hello, welcome to my channel. I presume if you've clicked on this video, you want to teach yourself bass. Well, you're in luck because I taught myself how to play bass from scratch nearly five years ago. And now I play in three bands and have never regretted learning bass any day since. Today, I'm going to share with you 10 tips that I think will really help when you're teaching yourself how to play bass. Plus stick around to the end for some bonus tips on things that you're probably doing wrong. If you find the tips in this video helpful or make sure you leave the video a thumbs up and if you're new around here, click subscribe for new creative content every week. I'd love to have you. Number one, first of all, you need to figure out whether you learn better by ear or reading tabs. Personally, I prefer figuring things out by ear. For example, the first song I ever learnt was Hey by the Pixies, and I learnt it accidentally. I was mucking around on an acoustic guitar and just heard the song in my head and figured out how to play it. You might know the bass line, Hey! Dun dun dun, dun 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 dun. Alternatively, you might do better reading tabs or sheet music, but I do not have time for sheet music these days. If you haven't seen them before, these are what tabs look like. They're a really simple diagram which just shows the string of the bass guitar and which fret you need to be holding down. They don't really give you much information on how long the note is being held or anything, so you still have to be able to hear the song. But if you have a bit more trouble with pitch, like if you're kind of like, what note there is, then it's a lot easier to read tabs. This also works if you can't hear the bass very well in a recording, or I still revert to tabs when I find the songs a bit kind of tricky and I cannot tell how many notes the bassist is playing. Once you know whether you learn quicker through sound or visuals, stick to that, master that, you will learn so much quicker and have so much less frustration. Number two, and this is so important, always use a tuner. Okay, repeat after me, always use a tuner. When you're first starting out, it can be really disheartening when you're trying to play something and it just does not sound like the song. Maybe you're trying to play like a big punky song and you're rocking out like... And it just doesn't sound like the song and you've checked the tabs, mind you, tabs can be wrong, or you've listened to the song over and over again, none of the notes seem to fit, you're probably out of tune. Please buy a tuner. Unless you're exceptionally gifted, you cannot tune by ear, especially when you're new, and you'll be amazed how much better you sound when you're fully in tune. You will sound professional. You can buy little tuners that clip onto the end of your bass, you can also buy tuning pedals, which I think are even better. It doesn't matter if it says it's a tuner for guitars, they're all the same, just do it. Tip number three is learn songs that you love. I made this mistake when I was a kid and I was trying to learn guitar, which I still cannot play to this day. I was following a curriculum, so I was learning exercises and scales and songs that I'd never heard of before in my life, and I was so bored, so bored. Because I was bored, I wasn't practicing. Because I wasn't practicing, I wasn't getting any better. And so even after a couple of years, I still couldn't play anything and got no satisfaction out of playing. Do not do this to yourself. Find some songs that you love that are fairly simple as well. Learn them and then play them over and over and over again. Play along to the song, blast the volume up or have it in your headphones. Pretend you're the rock star on the stage with the band. You'll get so much better because you're putting the practice in and you'll be having fun at the same time. There was a guy. Number four, and this is also really important. Always play with an amp. You need to be able to hear yourself. And surprise, surprise, a bass with no amp you can't hear that. Find yourself a really cheap, dirty practice amp. I don't care if it was 20 bucks on Gumtree, you just need to be able to hear yourself. If your parents are complaining, if your housemates are complaining, 
Get one that you can plug some headphones into or just tell them to suck it up because you're learning how to be a rock star. Tip number five, is play around with picking the bass or playing with your fingers and then commit. Once you have a favorite one, stick to that, master it. You can continue swapping between them a bit as your skills develop, but in the beginning, I think it's best just to pick one and learn it. One guide or one rule, I guess, which has many, many, many exceptions, is that a lot of the time, punk music, stuff that's played with a straight rhythm, stuff that's played really fast, you often use a pick and you do alternate picking. Whereas if you're playing stuff that's more funky and groovy and has more of a syncopated rhythm, off the beat, melting around, all that kind of stuff, play it with your fingers. Now let me tell you, if you are choosing to use a pick to learn bass with, bass picks are a lot bigger than normal guitar picks. That's because bass strings are a lot bigger than normal guitar strings. And if you're trying to shred on the bass with a skinny little guitar pick, you are going to shred up your thumb. Trust me, it hurts. And buy heaps of them because you will lose them. Tip number six is if you've done all of these things, you're in tune, you're playing with the same kind of techniques as your favorite bands and you still don't sound like them, you probably need a pedal. Now, luckily, a lot of the time bassists don't go as crazy on the pedals as guitarists, but it's still fairly rare for a bassist to just be playing clean into the amp. But what you want to do if you want a particular sound is you can look up what pedals a bassist you admire uses. If you can't get that exact pedal, if it's too expensive, too rare, look for similar pedals. Maybe you want a distortion pedal, maybe you want a fuzz, maybe you want reverb. Go into music stores and you can try them, or look online for secondhand options that are just super cheap. Tip number seven is keep your bass in easy reach. Keep it out of the case, keep it in your bedroom preferably, with an amp there, with a lead there, ready to go. You want as few obstacles as possible between you and playing the bass. This way, you're most likely to make a habit out of practicing. Tip number eight is simplify songs if they're too hard. And this is really easy to do on bass. Most of the time, especially in rock music, the bass line is actually just following the chord progression. So rather than playing whatever fancy kind of arpeggiated chords that the bassist might be playing in the song, you can just play the root note of whatever chord the guitarist is playing. If you can't figure it out by ear, or you can't find a tab which is that simple, the easy way to do this is to look up the guitar chords of the song. These will either come to you also as tabs or as chord diagrams. If they're tabs, just read the lowest note and play that. It will usually be whatever is up on the E string. If they're chord diagrams, all you need is the letter of the chord. So say for instance, if the chord progression of a song is A, G, F sharp, E. It doesn't matter if they're major or they're minor, major, nine, suspended kind of things. Ignore all of that, just read the letter. So with this imaginary chord progression, that's G, A, F sharp, E, all that we need to play as a bassist is the root note. A, G, F sharp, E. Play it along to the song and you'll know pretty quickly whether or not it sounds right. You see, we've been listening to music our entire lives, so we know it pretty well intuitively. A good rule of thumb for most scales in Western music is whatever note you're on is either in the right key or just one semitone away. A semitone is just one fret. At the end of the day, the whole point of simplifying the songs is being able to play the whole song through quicker. With bass, you can advance so far, but the greatest thing about it is you can pick up songs so quickly. So even if you're changing songs that exist and have brilliant bass lines, I don't care, it doesn't matter. If it means that you get being able to play the song through so that you practice it over and over again because you love playing it and you love hearing yourself play the songs that have meant so much to you, that's the important thing. Tip number nine 
is to write your own songs or improvise over other songs and this will give you so much more confidence as a musician. You can kind of feel like an imposter sometimes if you're just sitting in your bedroom playing along to songs that everyone else can already play. But once you start making up your own songs or improvising your own parts, you will feel like the musician. You're no longer copying anybody. When you're writing your own songs, you'll become so much more familiar with the fretboard. You'll pick up on all the scales. You will figure out how a song sounds and how to write songs and everything will make so much more sense. And tip number 10 is convince a friend to learn an instrument at the same time and start a band. Now, it shouldn't be very hard to convince somebody to learn an instrument. If you go to your friends, hey, I really want to learn bass, is there anything you want to learn? And they go, yeah, I've been meaning to learn drums. You go, great, let's both learn it. We can encourage each other to practice daily and in two months time, let's have a jam as a band. Honestly, having an end goal in mind, whether that's playing with somebody, forming a band, playing gigs, releasing music, having that end goal will motivate you to keep practicing every day and having somebody else play makes it more fun. Things that you're probably doing wrong. First of all, you might not be pushing the strings down hard enough. Already play guitar? Think you're holding the strings down hard? You're not. Hold them down harder. If you don't hold them down hard enough, you might mute the string, like that. You might make it kind of buzz, like that. You need to hold it down firmly to get a nice clear tone. Secondly, you might be holding the string in the wrong spot. Now this goes for all the real newbies at playing fretted instruments. When it says to hold the fifth fret, what you want to hold is directly before the fifth fret bar. So not on the metal bar, not in the middle of the fret, right before the bar. This is the spot where you'll get the crisp note at the exact right pitch. One tip that is so easily forgotten about is cut your fingernails. So when I was a 10 year old learning guitar, I had really long fingernails. I had no idea that they would affect my guitar. And it wasn't until my third ever guitar teacher pointed out that I was holding the strings wrong because my long nails were in the way that I realized I had to cut them. So you want to be holding your strings down with the very tips of your fingers, not the pads. If you have long nails, this is kind of impossible. So cut those nails and hold down the strings with the tips. Your fingers might get blisters, they might callus, they might hurt, they might bleed. It's all in the name of punk rock and trust me, you'll get there soon. Your fingers will toughen up and before long you'll have beautiful bass fingers. Thankfully mine actually look fine, mostly, except for that one. Another mistake you might be making is thinking that you can't afford to learn bass, that picking up a new instrument, especially an electric one, is too expensive. Well, buy everything secondhand. Music is a hobby that a lot of people tend to pick up and then give up very, very quickly. So there's always an abundance of secondhand musical equipment for sale. And the final thing you might be doing wrong, especially if you're a guitarist, is playing up and down the fretboard rather than up and down the strings. Even if you're playing singular strings on a guitar, you might hold the entire chord so that you can kind of transition between them quicker. In case you haven't noticed, the frets on a bass are a lot wider, the gaps between the strings are bigger, you kind of need huge hands to be holding down chords, and people do, I mean, look at metal. With bass, a lot of the time it's smoother to be moving up and down the fretboard. So instead of playing like This kind of playing has two main advantages for bass. It is easier on your hands, you're not going to cramp as hard trying to hold down these thick strings in obscure kind of patterns. 
And the other thing is you don't have to worry about muting strings if everything you're playing is on the same note. So that's all of my tips. I will leave a list of some of the first ever songs I learnt down below. I found them really simple and really fun to play. So maybe you'll enjoy them too, especially if you've got similar music taste to me. If you've watched this far, thank you so much for sticking with me. And I presume you actually are interested in playing bass. So honestly, just do it. If you don't have a bass, please go and buy one right now and start teaching yourself. There will never be a day that you regret learning an instrument. If you're anything like me, you love music. Music is your life. You listen to it every day. You feel so many things because of it. And so if you care about music that much, like I do, let me tell you there's nothing better than being able to play it. So if you've been thinking about it, just do it. Maybe I should have won this the whole time.